okay today we'll be talking about bjt bipolar junction transistor very often used in uh, discrete circuits uh, in electronics so basically uh, what you see here is this uh, biz this is a bjt what you're looking at at your screen this one is bjt it has three terminals so a uh, bjt is a three terminal device c stands for collector it is written as collector b for base it's base and e for emitter okay so the generic symbol for bjt is something like this okay so bjt are of uh, let me clear this thing for you guys bjt are of two kinds basically bjt are of two kinds one is npn type one is npn type npn and the other is pnp so these are the two types of bjt okay so now let's move towards the next topic so the figure what you're seeing here so this is a typical electronic bjt electronic just remember this is an electronic bjt the picture you're seeing in your screen uh, a power bjt will look something like this if you actually use one you'll see that it's something like this power bjt so there is a whole so it's big than an electronic bjt okay so then again it will have the base collector and emitter whatever it is okay so now let's move on towards the next topic then okay this is a simplified structure and modes of operation this is a simplified structure for bjt basically so this the first one here is you can easily understand n p n so it's an n p n bjt and the below one is a p n p bjt okay p n p bjt so it's very much simplified base region emitter region collector region so this terminal is known as emitter it is collector and this region is known as base these are metal contacts okay these are metal contacts the black ones okay and uh, similarly this is p type n type and p this is collector base emitter again so this is emitter base and collector these are metal contacts again okay so let's move okay these are the operation reasons or modes of operation as you've seen in mosfet if you recall from mosfet i'm talking about mosfet if you recall from mosfet the reasons or modes of operations were something like this uh, cut off right cut off then you would have a triad reason in mosfet right mosfet the, then saturation reason if you recall properly saturation reason so these were in mosfet these are all for MOSFET but for BJT the modes of operations are actually these three not three actually one more there is that is known as reverse active so one is cut off again then active and saturation okay so the characteristic curve of a BJT looks something like this it's almost similar to MOSFET in some terms but let me tell you what's the difference okay so uh, let me erase this one for you this is not actually correct. okay okay so now uh, okay let's talk about them so this uh, reason right here is known as active okay this is something new and this reason right here is known as saturation so now if you recall about MOSFET if you compare with MOSFET and BJT so this is BJT I'm talking about BJT and if you talk about the MOSFET the characteristic equation was something like this and this reason was known as saturation if you recall it properly okay but in BJT this small reason is known as saturation okay and this this reason where the current is much more straight the reason is known as active okay so this exist is vce collector to emitter voltage and this exists is ic collector current okay 
so so i see collector current collector current so uh, now let's talk about how to actually how to uh, use or bias your bjt in this certain working operations okay let's talk about that thing so in order to work the bjt in cutoff there is there are two things you need to learn that is uh, let me raise this uh, one again so that you may have a clear view uh, so see that so in order to have a cutoff reason see that this is known as EB, EB, ebj known as emitter base junction and cbj known as collector base junction so there are two junctions in bjt if i go back uh, i can show you properly so this one is an npn bjt right this one is an npn bjt so see that this junction right here is known as ebj junction this junction known uh, known as collector base junction because this is collector reason and this is base reason so the junction is collector base junction and this is emitter this is base the collection the uh, connecting reason is emitter base junction okay so in order to ha uh, have cutoff reason you need to bias both the junctions ebj and cbj at reverse for active you need to bias ebj at forward bias and cbj at reverse for saturation both the junction needs to have forward bias okay and there is another mode i told you that is reverse active in order to get reverse active what you need to do is you need to do the opposite of active you need to bias the ebj junction to reverse and cbj junction to forward so i'll talk much about in this uh, in this uh, uh, in this lecture I'll be talking about actually in uh, how an active reason uh, uh, biasing works okay so so basically in cutoff what actually happens is there is zero current flow the current flow is literally zero in active I see is will be zero okay okay uh, for other reasons like active and saturation there will be current flow now let's move forward so this is what you have so before explaining this whole thing i'll i'll just uh, show you some things uh, basically uh, just to make you guys recall so i'll use this slide to do that sorry so i'll just use this one to do that okay now, if you recall uh, the PN junction of diode, right? Just a basic idea to start with PN junction. So the P reasons were containing a lot more holes. Majority carriers were holes, and in the N reason, the majority carriers were electrons, right? Okay. If we have reverse biased it. So how to reverse bias? We need to put negative on P reason and positive on N reason, right? The uh, the depletion reason increases, right? The depletion reason increases or widens. Uh, so what happens is that the minority carrier, like in the P type reason, the minority carrier is el electron, and in N type reason, the minority carrier is hole. So minority carrier will flow. In reverse bias if you recall properly okay so this will act as a base in understanding the active reason operation of BJT so now this is an active reason operation of BJT uh, let me tell you how it is biased so see that this is an NPN BJT okay so what I have did here is see that this is the emitter base junction right so in the emitter base junction it needs to be forward bias now see this this is a forward biasing of emitter base junction now this is a reverse biasing of the collector to base junction this cbj see that so i put a positive voltage at c and negative voltage at uh, base so the collector base junction is at reverse biased and now this is forward biased okay 
So now let's talk about so it is an active reason what happens is let me try to uh, make you understand when we are putting a forward bias in this for uh, in this reason or in this uh, junction elect, uh, emitter based junction what happens is see that you have this voltage right so so this source will inject a current in this direction towards base right so there will be a current flow towards base so you're basically what is the meaning of current flow current flow means injecting of holes so holes will inject it will be injected here and now uh, see that you have put a negative right so this is negative so this is negative now this is positive so pn junction is uh, this pn junction is forward biased what will happen a uh, current flow p uh, will happen from p to n right so this current will flow towards this direction so current direction of current flow means direction of hole flow so i i have injected a current so this is the current or the hole and this is going to this direction as this junction pn junction is forward biased it's a pn junction or more easily known as diode right so current will flow from p to n so holes or current is flowing from p to n so this is the injected holes the direction of injected holes is towards this direction and now what will happen the opposite of hole is electron and it goes towards the opposite direction of hole flow so see that the hole flow direction is towards this side so the electron will be flowing from this direction to this right so it will grow from n to p and will be actually accumulating in this p region now see this one one interesting thing see this one and now this p junction and this n junction is actually in reverse bias right reverse bias so if you if you just recall uh, what i have told you earlier about pn junction that in reverse bias region minority carrier flows so see that in p junction these accumulated electrons are now minority right these electrons are minority okay so this minority electrons will be swapped away by this uh, reverse bias right by this reverse bias towards this side so electrons will flow from this p to n and will get out in this direction so electrons are flowing from p to n so direction of electron is from left to right so the direction of hole will be from right to left in this direction so see that the current flow direction is then will be from this to this current flow direction and there is an injection of current from this direction and the whole flow direction is from here to here so in, in this is how your current is flown in the active mode operation now i have uh, written here some things for you so that you can read it and easily understand okay so this is the process now let's move forward so there are some things you need to know uh, for BJT that is HFE or beta is known as common emitter current gain we'll talk about it later and IS is the diode saturation current uh, which is on the order of nano ampere that means 10 to the power 10 to the power minus 9 amps so for a low power BJT okay so what is is see that this is this is the characteristic equation these are the basic equation for active mode okay just remember these are the equation for active mode you are get to you get to use these equ equations only if the bjt is in the active mode so this is for an npn bjt the equations so see that ic is equals to isc to the power vbe by bt so this is is the saturation uh, current so IB is equal to IC by beta or IS by beta it is where something you can easily understand and these are the equations for P type you can uh, study this one by yourself okay VT is the thermal voltage which can be found by KT by Q Q is Boltzmann constant which is at room temperature is 25 millivolt okay it's a constant more or less a constant so a uh, generic equation for beta is something like this beta is equals to alpha by 1 minus alpha and alpha is equals to beta by 1 plus beta okay so beta is always less than beta is always less than 1 remember this okay so these are the equations one generic equation that you can use at all reasons is see that this will give you the equation see that 
this uh, this right here is your collector current going in this direction you're injecting beta in this direction so if you money uh, if you draw this as a node right so you're injecting IC you're injecting IB you're exiting or you're getting IE so they we can write a KCL and find this equation that is I E is equals to I C plus I B right so this will be a equation and it can be used in any reason whether it is in active reason or saturation reason so it's a common equation just remember this you can use it anywhere you want so I E is equals to I B plus I C so collector current is equals to base current plus uh, sorry emitter current is equals to base current plus collector current so now this is a relative voltage level which actually helps in actually uh, doing the mathematical problems so in order to turn on a BJT or have a current flow uh, the base to emitter must have a voltage difference of 0.7 volts okay for an NPN BJT always it should have always it should have okay and uh, to maintain it in a current flow state okay so uh, a BJT can flow current in two reasons actually active and saturation so if the collector to emitter voltage is in between 0.3 volt then it's the saturation reason if it goes beyond 0.3 then it's active reason okay but you must always you must have uh, 0 0.7 voltage difference between VBE that means this should be actually 0.7 in order to have current flow so vice versa for PNP you can easily understand from for emitter to base junction you should have a 0.7 voltage drop so you can easily understand the opposite thing okay so now let's move on to the next one so so see that we have actually talked about a simplified structure this is a much more a practical or actual structure of uh, for NPN BJT or this is an actual much more preferred structure in an integrated circuit for bipolar junction transistor BJT okay so now so a BJT is actually known as a current control device because see that we actually inject current uh, through the base or we get current through the base so in NPN to make it work we inject a current through the base and for PNP to make it work we get a current from uh, out of the base okay so we are injecting a current or ejecting a current from base so that's the reason we call it a current control device by controlling this amount of base current we actually control the amount of current flowing from collector to emitter okay or emitter to collector for PNP so uh, this is a characteristic equation characteristic sorry characteristic curve for BJT this is also known as ICVCE curve as you can see this reason is known as active reason and this is small reason right here is known as the saturation reason and you can easily understand this saturation reason will uh, will be having a very small voltage right because it is very small you can see this 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 very small and that is the hence the reason uh, the VCE uh, should be kept within 0.3 right 0.3 volt to achieve a uh, saturation reason okay so and if you uh, interpolate this curve backwards you will get a voltage that is known as minus VA okay uh, with this uh, value you you can actually measure the output resistance found at active reasons R0 and that is actually this one R0 is equals to VA plus VCE by IC IC is the collector current so this is the characteristic equation for an NPN BJT okay so if the base to emitter voltage is smaller so you can easily understand you will f find the current to be very small if you increase the base to emitter voltage the current will also increase so this is an important note I need to show you guys that is uh, in order to solve mathematical problems what we do in 
the case of BJT is first we assume if it we are not sure if we are not sure uh, whether the BJT is in the active mode or saturation mode what we do is we first assume it in the active mode and write the equation and finally get an answer and then try to uh, validate whether it is actually is in whether it is actually in the active region or not uh, if it is in the active region then it is okay but if not then uh, we assume that it must be in the saturation region when the redo the analysis and always remember for amplifier applica amplifier applications the bjt is actually operated in the active mode so this is the active mode whereas if you recall for mosfet if you recall for mosfet the amplifier was in this region that is known as saturation so again for similar reason to get a good gain uh, in bjt we'll use this region which is actually known here as active region okay so for amplifier active mode is used and for switching operation we'll be using the cutoff region and this is small region right here so for mosfet it was the cutoff region and this uh, this triad reason so for bjt the cutoff reason and this is small reason right here is known as saturation reason so for switching we'll use cutoff and saturation so in active mode you see that in active mode this is the active mode or active reason you can see the output current ice is slightly dependent on vce right voltage so this phenomena is actually known as early effect okay early effect and it is modeled using a output resistance that is R0 this one right here thank you for today's lecture guys I hope you'll be practicing and use this address mid book uh, for further clear uh, clarity and if you have any question please comment on the video thank you